Yeah, Friday sex Friday podcast. Sex in a relationship. In my um retainer as um this <laughs> definitely is a buzzkill with your. Or it could be good for a blowjob. Fuck no. Okay. Um, it's also, remember we know somebody and she's like, oh, I just take out my teeth to give a blowjob. It's amazing. Anyways, it's somebody's mother. Um, oh, uh-huh, uh-huh. We actually reached out to you guys because we were having a, a conversation and if we're having a conversation, we know it's crossing somebody else's mind. So what do we ask everybody? I was curious mm-hmm. of all the divorces we know. Mm-hmm. In high insight, do mm-hmm. they always have an inkling mm-hmm. and they wanted to make it work? Or mm-hmm. was there a moment in the marriage where they're like, over? Or um, at what point and how long does it take for you to be like, hmm, like, what is it? I My initial thought in this is that there isn't always an inkling, although there is sometimes. Because, mm-hmm. again, never generalize in anything in life when you're dealing with humans because there isn't a generalization Mm -hmm. there are so many different kinds of people um i do think that at the time when our people our age got married we were still on the tail end and i don't know uh, maybe there are definitely parts of the world where this is still a thing that there was a certain age that people wanted to be married by and 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 there's lots of reasons for that one it was just like i I want to make sure I find somebody before this age, but also Uh because I want to have kids and I want to get started before I'm quote unquote geriatric. And if I'm going to bump out these kids, you know, if I back it up, I need to find that person. And so uh, often people marry the person who they're dating at that time, at that age. Convenience. It literally could have been five years later. It could be a different person, but it just happened to be that person at that age, at that time. And I think that, um, I think that it's crazy to think, let's say if you got married at 27, 29, 25, that, Everything is going to, you're going to both stay the same people and the relationship's going to stay the same. I think that is a crazy idea. No one talks about it though. You would never think. No. You would, you're you growing up. You you stay the same. You're, you're not supposed to change. No. no one talks about changing. No. And I know that a lot of people, when you ask them, like, how did your marriage last for so long? They're like, we grew together. But to grow together is to say that two people are going to want to kind of grow in the same sort of direction together. At the same time. I mean, I think that naturally as human beings, that's odd. I agree. <laughs> And how are you even when you have a family, you're like, wait, I'm going to grow. Um, can you, I'll be back in a minute because if your mom's so busy with your kids and then your husband's out like having a career and going for like dinners and like having a life that has evolved and then you're like, wait a minute, what are you doing? I'm, we are not having the same experience growing through our thirties yet we're supposed to stick together and be on the same page when we had totally different experiences and experiences are what make you grow and make you who you are. So if you're not living, it would be way more natural that you and I would have the same sort of experience in our thirties that we would grow together. Exactly. Because we were doing the same thing at the same time. So I asked all of you for the input up to what your situation was, because I like to hear your situation. Oh my gosh. And I would also want to know like, Oh, this is like a side note. This is a different one we can ask. But was there any, like, did you not know, did you not have an inkling, but people important in your life had the inkling, but you didn't listen? Oh, okay. Go on. Yeah. Every (laughs) mother-in-law. After 22 years, Mm -hmm. and then I found out he was cheating. That's a big one for a lot of people. Okay. But I'm like, did you know before? Right. Like, and if you didn't find out he was cheating, would would you you still be together? Would everything still be great? Was there something... Do you think, do you think that if somebody cheats, that there's always something wrong in the relationship? Nope. I totally agree. Nope. I I mean, okay. No, no. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Do I think there's something wrong in the relationship? No, because I don't think that people cheat for sex. Like I don't, I don't think necessarily people are always going to go and cheat on someone. Like Mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't think they're like, I don't think they're thinking about the person they're with. Mm-hmm. I think what they're thinking is about themselves mm-hmm. and the situation. And mm-hmm. they're probably like, I like, they're not maybe even in the same entity, but the person you're with ends up getting hurt out by way of that person's actions. But it's not that person's, what that person did all the time. Yeah. And I think that sometimes there is like, one night stands that happen here or there, or whatever. But then there, the different story is if, let's say, 
your work with someone and he is oh. really starting a relationship and he's really considering everything and he's considering his wife and his family, but he continues to have the affair or she and they carry on with all like thinking about it, thinking about it. That's one kind of affair. That seems like intentional. It seems like they're, there must be something miss, deeply more missing for him if he's actually considering jumping into another relationship well, with someone. But one like one night stands and hooking up with people I don't I don't think that they're thinking about their spouse and maybe they should be because that's selfish and it's going to hurt their feelings. But I think they are just thinking about themselves. Yeah. And I also think that emotionally, if someone is putting so much time into someone else, it's a betrayal of like your relationship because you're like if 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 someone's like being able to play like two sides and, and make both parties feel extra like amazing. But I think what happens is attention begins to go to someone else mm-hmm. and you begin to feel like something's wrong with you so when the partner's an asshole and like makes a person feel like they're the ones who are the problem Mm -hmm. and they're blaming it on them so they can feel like better about themselves yeah so like well i did this for a reason Mm -hmm. it's actually your fault and you're like no fucker yeah you know so you weren't available a lot of men i bet would say that you weren't available you didn't have sex with me enough i what my needs weren't being met yep so i went outside yep so i think there's taking that energy and effort and putting it into the relationship and then together coming to the conclusion that it's not going to work or it is going to work but like instead just being like Meh, and also my problem, my, I'm not, i don't get what i want i'm going to move on i question everyone who's like i won't i have to leave him because he physically did something with someone mm-hmm. but they can get over an emotional some people can be like well they just had a, they just were like emotionally connected for me that's a really fucked up mm-hmm. um divide because mm-hmm. i think in a way i'd rather get over a physical mm-hmm. bump in nasties mm-hmm. and I would over someone 100%. who had a deep con- I would always question our relationship because I'm like if you can be so into someone mm-hmm. like, obviously you're physically attracted to them mm-hmm. or like you're physically something to them mm-hmm. but if you're emotionally connected with them mm-hmm. then I wonder what we have because you're not coming to me for that uh-huh uh-huh I'd rather you be like all in with me emotionally than physically but mm-hmm. but my love language isn't physical so mm-hmm. I don't know for someone whose love language is physical. I'm sure it's very some different for someone else. Um, when I married mm-hmm. my first husband, mm-hmm. I knew even before I walked down the aisle that he was not right for me. Nothing else? No. Nope. She knew. But my when I was walking is, down, before she walked down, she said yes. And she's like, I should not be doing this. My question is, why did she do it? It was age and time, wasn't it? Why'd she do it? If she knew it wasn't right, why'd she do it? Well, you know someone who did it. Why'd they do it? I actually know a couple of people. And why'd they do it? It was age and time. And I think you think, what else is out there? And like, men I, should be very careful. By the way, if you're a man, and we should tell our men, mm-hmm. our husbands, mm-hmm. not, I mean, our children, oh, um, that, um, that girls look at um, time and the age mm-hmm. they are to get married. Mm-hmm. They might not be in love with you, FYI. Mm-hmm. They're mm-hmm. going to pretend they are, mm-hmm. but they're not. They mm-hmm. just want to have a baby with you. So watch out. Yeah. I know men have to be careful of that. It, that's it's, it's so it's so interesting to like be like, okay, it, like to your kid, okay, so you want to marry this person? I understand now when people are like, why don't you give it a couple years? You know what I mean? Men have the luxury. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and hopefully now we'll have our eggs and sperm frozen so everyone can wait longer. But if it's still... Um, okay, so the test is if they just want a family with you, which is very natural. I'm not mm-hmm. saying that's a bad thing because mm-hmm. I really wanted a family with my mm-hmm. husband. Like mm-hmm. that was a bit... I don't even... I think it was so driven in mm-hmm. me. I probably saw mm-hmm. that first. Mm-hmm. I probably saw mm-hmm. him as a great mm-hmm. person with kids. Mm-hmm. That was probably my biggest attraction to mm-hmm. him. Which you, This will be a great partner to have children with. Which you're not even like... That's in the... That's the back brain mm-hmm. talking but I I, if you imagine you like freeze your eggs for a few years mm-hmm. and then let's get married and if they're like Honestly, no and then you're like oh yeah. it's like a prenup it is it's a it's a it's a sexual prenup if in two years we still want to be married to each other we can get married oh my god but we don't be- have babies we don't have babies until a while yeah like if you what, have an inkling if you're curious of why they want to do it but I think some women aren't even aware that they're no. looking at the clock and I've heard what I have heard women say I need to have a bit ba- like I they'd be a great dad I need to have a baby with them even if it doesn't work out I have heard that I have heard that out of people's mm-hmm. mouths so um it is a reality mm-hmm. 100% that he'd be a great dad so mm-hmm. even if it doesn't work out mm-hmm. at least I know I have a great dad mm-hmm. do men think that way do men think they'd be a great mom so they can be the women of my children I don't think most of them 
I don't think we need so. to have a man on here and ask some questions. Why do you marry her? Why do you propose to her? Yeah, why? Why? Would she be a great wife, a great mom, or you love her as a person? Or are you just still you just still infatuated with her right now? So you just don't want anyone else to have her. So why you do you think her? your husband chose you? She's still thinking. I would say definitely time for him as well. I think he was a lot like me. Like I want to get married. I want to have kids. Like okay. I want to get this this ball rolling. I think he was. He was in that way, and I think he was just like that. Is so interesting because I would I don't see him as that person right now. Mm. Like I don't see him as someone who's like I want to get a jump on the family. Mm-hmm. Like that's a minivan guy to me. Mm-hmm. Like let's get a minivan. Let's get like to me he's a dinner a dinner a night out on the town and dinner guy. Mm. Well, like with all, you, like going for dinners yeah, and like you I know hosting was, dinners. I think all of his friends were getting engaged. Okay, it, all, everyone got married and engaged within the, the the same couple years. Okay, and I think it was just the normal thing to do. It was the next step, and also you're amazing. I just mean in his head, what was I his drive? What was his drive? Yeah, like he could have been um, like there was a reason why not beyond you. Mm-hmm. There was a reason yes. that he was ready. Yeah, and I wonder what his reason why'd you marry me i mean i'll ask him later i ask mine all the time what do you why'd you uh, he has you? not a lot of answers okay yeah i don't I think, think they he were thought just like these girls are major scores i mean we dated for a long time oh right like and it, i did not we were together forever like if he was gonna start over again i mean he'd that, already put in the work and time i mean like now what mm-hmm. you know like, I'm, i was a good person mm-hmm. i don't think he thought much about it she's mm-hmm. cute she's fun yeah. she's good with kids you know what she yeah. hasn't no, like I, I actually she hasn't robbed a bank i don't know if mark had ever imagined me as a mother i don't think that crosses mine i think he just thought this is the right kind of lady yeah you <laughs> This is the right kind and of... And I'm... He was very young, actually. I know. But he was American, so I felt like they did that shit. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm going to ask Mark again. I mean, he's very much like... Doesn't think much about like... I don't know. You're the girl to marry. Yeah, like I was with you. I liked you. <laughs> <laughs> we were together. You were the lady I was dating. We were together. Like, What else do you want me to say? We what? were together for a long time. What else did they say? Um, They fell out of love when I fell out of love. But when did you fall out of love? And why did you fall out of love? And what did falling out of love look like? Mm -hmm. Like what could feel so that's what I like. I'm going to ask her. Sometimes you think to yourself like I see how they're getting a divorce. And sometimes you're like I could probably live with or without you. You know and you sort of like just play that game. And then you're like but I feel like the only way that I would get to a point where I'd actually not want to be with Mark would be like he like he what he bothered me so much Oof. and he made me mad mad because i've so what would make you mad uh nothing that he particularly did just everything he said and did oh like ick. some of my the, the, the biggest ick, ick in life the ick because when you get the ick you can't come back and i've heard some people talk about their ex-husbands and they just he, it, it's everything is an eye roll like he's so frustrating I, he sees the world in a way. Oh, even when they're not together, it's not like we're amicable. That he's an annoying person he's to an, them. He's an annoying. Like, and they must have always been. You don't fundamentally change that much, or you grow, and what you thought was cute is so annoying. Mm-hmm. In the beginning, I think you're a lot more tolerant to people. If it I feels. mean that is, because I don't know a lot of couples who talk highly of their ex. And they were so in love at one point that they got married. I and they know. sometimes spent 15 years together or whatever. I know. Um, I, I know. And I, I, I wonder when, when I wonder when people talk about their exes like that, I'm like, do you remember when you were like infatuated with them? I Isn't know. Isn't that weird to think? Or were you ever? Were you ever? Or you just really liked them and you were like, okay. Like, I think there's people who are madly in love. I mean, there's a lot of like celebrities like that they're like madly in love and then it's like they couldn't even imagine themselves talking to that person ever again that's so weird this one was um this is easy when he was going to another woman's house then trying to tell me he was going to her house to ask advice about me meanwhile he was having an affair yeah he was going to the woman's house to ask advice about her so he's like i'm going to her house to talk to get advice on how to make it better with you idiot what an idiot. You know what? He's not even the affair makes you leave him. That's an idiot he's answer. Low IQ. <laughs> idiot. <laughs> he's not a smart guy. No. Mm. God. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm just going to another woman's house to get advice. It, can you not think of anything else? You know what? When in doubt, say you're, she's making you a gift. It's actually a custom gift that she's making you. And she's an artist. You should see what she's making you. Yeah, it's a surprise party. You don't know her, but it's at her house. Mm-hmm. I rented it out. Yeah. God, there's so many more answers. 
advice. Okay. Hmm. What kind of, I would be like, what kind of advice? What'd you ask? What'd you tell you to do? I would just play that game. I would just keep going. Yeah. How to make you happier. Hmm. Okay. And um, what did she say to do? She just said to listen to you more. You think that he could pull that out? <laughs> Hell no. no. Not this guy. No. I wouldn't even get mad. I would just keep going. I'm like, mm. yeah. Mm. I'd love to meet. I want to thank her for all that she's done for you. Can we, mm-hmm. can I have her number? Mm-hmm. I'd love to call her. Mm-hmm. That'd be really, um, really important and great mm-hmm. to me. Okay. Um, I knew it was time to get a divorce when I was happier while we were apart, even if it was just at work. Um, really? So she was unhappy when he was around and that was enough to divorce him. (laughs) I don't know what's funnier than that. Um, I would say, I would say, yep, that was, yep. She was unhappy when he, maybe she had massive ick. She must have been unhappy all the time because I think that as married people, we know there are times where we would wish they would just leave the house and go away. Yeah. But there's got to be times where you also like having them around. When you get to a point where you no longer like having them around ever. Yeah. I get that. Why yeah, yeah. live your life unhappy? Well, good for you. Mm-hmm. Like to the people who are able to do that. Mm-hmm. I mean, especially if he's a good guy and mm-hmm. you're able to be like, you know what? You're just not for me. Wow. Is all I have I to say. I think it would be so hard to say to someone like how she felt. And he's like, I'm totally happy in this. That would be so hard. He's not. He's not. He's not. You can't be happy with someone who's not happy with you there. Yeah. Like you're conveniently there then. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to face that your life will be harder. Mm -hmm. And they say, like we said, 70% of divorces are, are initiated by women these days. And And they're happier without men. And that is a fact. And And men are less happy. And I think that men will just stay. Like a a, a lot of my uh, people that know the divorce, like he would have stayed forever. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They're happy. Just status quo. Mm -hmm. Um, This one is, I didn't want my daughter to grow up and have a marriage like mine. I actually, that's so funny because I I also know somebody who basically she got to a point where she noticed that her daughter was old enough to see the relationship and that was like the tipping point. I don't want my daughter to think this is a good example of a relationship. Wow. Wow. Because I know a lot of people who don't think their parents have a great relationship. I know. I most people I know don't think their parents I have know. a great relationship. But I think also as more forward thinking um independent women that we are like we're I mean, we're more than our parents' generation, not maybe not our moms, but like in general. So we're already forward thinking because we're thinking about mental health, we're thinking about our kids, we're thinking about who they're gonna end up with, we're thinking about all that. So we're considering that. I don't think people considered that. That's I think true. they had bad relationships in front of their kids and they never thought that the kids, it would affect the kids. Yeah. So they wait till, you know, the kids move out to university and they're like, no, 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 all those years that your daughter or your son watched an unhealthy relationship, not only was not enjoyable for them, but they're going to take that and that's their example of a loving relationship. I know. So I think that in this case that I'm talking about this, this person and with her is like, now we have this younger generation of, of women and girls and we want them to want better. And how are we going to show them if we accept a life that isn't up to our, our, our standards, let alone theirs? Right. No basic men are up in this bitch. Mm-mm. No but you do basic have a, you know what's, men. You know what? I, I don't think a lot of people, married people think about this is you do have a responsibility to your children as a parent to show them a good example of a loving relationship and equal um, equal, equal responsibility to show them that daddy takes care of mommy and mommy takes care of daddy mm-hmm. and not just sexually, but like mm-hmm. in the laundry, in mm-hmm. the thing, in the way they talk to you, in the mm-hmm. way you talk to them, mm-hmm. in the way you buy them. You know, I, I'm not a big present person. No. But I do think that sh- for some people showing your kids mm-hmm. that like you're thinking. That you thought about them. Yeah, but you're it, it's not the amount. It's like no. what you, because my daughter's now like, can you just tell me what you want? Because we're going to have to go to the store yeah. and we're going to look around. He's not going to know, but at the end of this, if I know, then he knows. Like, and at so- the end of the day, that's like a, it's a, it's, it's a ridiculous exercise, but what it's showing your daughter is that dad cares enough yeah. that he wants to m- do something to make you happy. And that's enough. That's a good example right there. Is that Lee not Lee? We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with this one, which is, wow. I still don't feel like he's the one. 
So she got married thinking he wasn't the one. And now here we are. He's still not the one. He didn't grow in to be the one because, you know, I talked to some arranged marriage people, people who get mm. arranged marriages, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that when you go, not many, but a few, mm -hmm. and that I think that when you go into an arranged marriage, you understand clear roles of what you're mm -hmm. doing. You mm -hmm. are going into a marriage where you're like, mm -hmm. I'm doing this, well, also the crown. You're doing this, mm -hmm. like, these are our roles, and this is how we have to support each other to get through this. Mm -hmm. Some of the men have fallen in love. Some mm -hmm. of them, it's, it's a partnership and it works for them what they want in their life. Some of them, a modern day arranged marriage would be, we're a great partnership. Mm -hmm. Let's raise a child together. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm not madly in love with you, mm -hmm. I'm madly in like with you. Mm -hmm. And I might never find madly in love, mm -hmm. but you and I work so well together that I'm going to madly in like with you and raise a family because that's, I want a, a family more than I want madly in love. I totally For a agree. certain point. I think that that's, that example in itself is a lot of people. Let's take it one other step further is that person. Let's, let's do the woman's perspective because most of us are women that are listening. Um, I'm evolved enough to mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. that the madly in love is going to wear off maybe and maybe not. And maybe five years from now, I end up in the exact same place with you that my friend who was madly in love with hers is. Mm -hmm. There's no guarantee there's going to be any difference. Mm -mm. But I know that I can make it work with you. Mm -hmm. And I know you'll be respectful and take help me take care of my family. Mm -hmm. And I know that we will have a good, a good life together. Mm -hmm. Will we be rolling in the sand, mm -hmm. passionately making love in 20 years? No. But will we be madly in like going on trips together, having fun mm -hmm. and making it work? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that could last for a long time. And oh, then yeah. maybe one day it hits me that I want to have sex oh, on the beach. Exactly. And then we'll discuss that when it happens. You know what? And maybe you'll get to the point in life when you have an open marriage or an open relationship and you go have mad sex on the beach knowing that mad sex can't was come never, into, was can't never come your in, thing. Can't come into real life. Mm-hmm. Mad sex can't live forever. So you might as well. And if you're having mad sex. <laughs> not mad. Madly, deeply madly, passionate. Uh, passionate sex. Uh, Always you can't have that forever. No, no. I would say that's going to be a, a bunch of people. If you want to keep that kind of hot and heaviness. So, I mean, keep your partner. And then maybe you get <sighs> old enough to open up the marriage and go have vacation Multiples. vacation sex. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, for many years, I just had enough one day and left. She knew for many years that she needed, wanted, didn't, he wasn't the one and just got had enough one day. I was like, you know what? Fucking out. Mm -hmm. You get that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good for her. You know, cause it, it seems like when I think, when I hear someone's getting a divorce, I think to myself that feels so big and work and it feels like so much, but and so I wonder how do those people get to that place, which is like over 50% of the population, that it's worth it to do all that work to get a divorce. It's worth it. It's interesting though, that there are a lot of different, different reasons. Mm -hmm. um, I thought my first husband was forever. Mm -hmm. He changed the instant we got married. You shut up right now. You shut up right now. Should I ask? How long were you together how, before you got married? How did he change? How how long were you together before you got married? Were, were you together before you got married? Sorry, we were definitely together before we got married, Catherine. How long were you together before yes. you got married? That's what I asked. Okay. You just didn't hear that. It, it picked up your first part, not oh, mine. Okay, okay. Okay, we got some. The we need some. So the instant you got married, that's that's a psycho. If you change the person you are the minute you get married, that's scary. Mm. A bit psychotic. Because you, you think will. you know the person that you're marrying, and then all of a sudden they change and you're married to them. Oi. 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 Yeah, no, that's bad. Scary. Yep. Mm -hmm. But then there's murderers. Saying, guys, if you think that your husband is cheating or you think he's unhappy, you might want to figure that out because he is, there's a lot of them that are just going to go and try and kill you. Okay, here, I got a few new ones. I knew with, it's totally true. I knew with 100% certainty it was over in the delivery room having our child. I left 1.5 years later. It must have been the way he, mm -hmm. we talked about this. Mm -hmm. We said, it's so that you that when you 
don't have children, Mm -hmm. you and your husband or you and your spouse or you and your partner have a relationship that is just about you two and really you and then them and then you two can go for dinner. Like you kind of worry about yourself and then the fun you have together. Mm -hmm. Then when you have a child, you don't know who that person is or who they're going to be or what they're going to be like when they, when you bring a child in. So in the delivery room, if he was like impatient or apathetic or like this is annoying or like, you know, not like about him versus her. She could have been like, oh my God, I would never have been able to see this. Mm -hmm. And now I'm seeing this in ew. And some people are really bad with babies. Men are Mm -hmm. really, some men, Mm -hmm. but really great with toddlers or really good with babies. Like, you know, it's like an ebb and flow. Interesting, like, because she just said that, how many people can relate to that? That moment in the delivery room where those 24 hours after you had the first baby that you see something. And maybe you stay together with them forever, but you saw something at that moment in your life that you were like, shouldn't have been him. I I mean, she thought, and then no. I knew there were red flags at marriage, but I continued on thinking it could change. Mm -hmm. That's a big one for Mm -hmm. a lot of people. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. that is a big one. A hundred percent thought it was forever. Five years in red flags, not going away. A lot of red flags. I tried hard, but at 14 years, I was done. I got the courage to get divorced. Red flags at five years, and then she stayed another um, nine? Uh, I think after five years. Yeah. Yeah, there was like, the the red flags never went away. After nine years. And then another nine years, she was like, I got to get out of here. Good. But a lot of people know red flags before they get married, just so you know. Oh, yeah. And And they're like, I'm going to change it. No, you can't. You will not change the red flag. So you have to either, um, the partnership needs to either agree to work on it but you need to accept those red flags are not going to go away nope they're not you're gonna have to be okay with it he's gonna have to put some work into it yep but they're not gonna change the other thing is um, don't marry them if you see red flags don't do that the other thing about those red flags is uh i forget what i was gonna say so someone did fall respond i asked her Mm -hmm. i'm about um when i felt hold on what did she respond to uh Mm, she's the one that was like when I felt how long did it take to get the ick mm-hmm. it sounds bad but just imagine being turned off by everything that person That's does it. and how long did what take the ick to come mm-hmm. the ick the ick to come did she say how long she was married before she, she left oh and how long were you married before ick. how long were you dating before you got married god relationships are so weird I know especially when you're supposed to be with them forever. What a gamble, eh? What a fucking it's gamble. Frightening. What a gamble that I, your young ass self, you have to choose a life partner to procreate with and then assume it's going to work out for the best and maybe give them half of everything if you're super rich. I can't believe how many people think that this is a good idea and I how know. many men are like, yeah, I'm going to propose and marry a woman. I know. I, women are women are sneaky too, you know? They have ulterior motives too. Wow, it I is. do want to ask a whole bunch of men, why did you marry her? And I don't want your sticky sweet. I was madly in love with her. I couldn't picture my life without her. Why? What What was your ulterior motive to marrying her? Right. Yeah. Don't tell me everything was just, you've got something deep down that you saw in her that thought she'll bring me the life that I want. She did. Like they are. They mm-hmm. think, I don't, I don't think they think that hard though. I know that's why they need to go deep because we know what we know what some of those reasons were uh, and at a basic level. You know that's why we have to teach our kids. I'm, I'm asking her how long it took the to come. My things aren't all going through. Um, like what to, what are the base to look for? And if there are red flags, don't do it. Don't do red flags. Like don't think they're going to change. Those are red flags mm-hmm. forever. Mm-hmm. Forever. Mm-hmm. Not- oh, I know. What I was going to say. Yeah, they say. They say I bet we'll never make yeah. it. Um, that ocean oh, doesn't know what the ick means. It's when everything about them bothers you. It's when everything about them bothers you. Um, they say that the first one or two arguments or disagreements or fights, if you're a fighter, that you have in your relationship are most often the same things that will come back and you will will bother you forever and that's okay no if it's trust or money or any of that no that is not okay look at those fights no oh 
Uh, but okay, let's say in in a, in, a, in a healthy relationships. Okay, okay the things okay. that you disagreed upon are usually those things that came up in the relationship that aren't necessarily red flags, which they, they could be if it's trust. Oh, children! If he wants children, you don't 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 assume no, that's you can a change big one. one. Yeah. But if you argue about like like let's say he's like you're so messy, like yeah, small things like that. If you track the conversations or the things that kind of bother you about them, they usually on the core of it are the same, the same all the way through. Yeah, it drives me drives me crazy how um, organized my husband is. Mm-hmm. It annoys me. Did it always? Yes. Okay. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. The way you put things away in a clean closet, mm-hmm. it bothers me. Mm-hmm. Come on. And like dr- organizing drawers and shit on the mm-hmm. weekend, I'm like, well, there's so much mm-hmm. more to life. Right. Files? Files. Mm-hmm. A file folder? Mm-hmm. You need something? He has it. Mm-hmm. That doesn't feel normal. Mm-mm. You're supposed to search and then have to call and then swear and be like, oh my God, I can't find it. Mm-hmm. I know, I know that that sounds crazy. I know, but he is, sometimes I'm like, you know what else we were talking? We was, I was having a conversation with red flags and gray flags. And um, here's, here's an important one, guys. If you have, if they have a red flag, let's say a red flag, not a really bad one. Okay, let's call them gray flags. If you have that. Yeah. And they don't recognize that. Yeah. In their own selves. Well, he's that someone would call some women would call that perfect. My ex. No, I mean, like if your husband was like, I'm not super organized. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, okay. It's very annoying when a person doesn't like the things that our husbands would tell us the things that are that are annoying about us. Oh, we would totally agree. Yeah, oh yeah, I'm yeah, I'm so messy and so annoying. and so he's like life could be so easy if you just put it back. And, you know what's and I'm so like funny Whoa. is when they tell us those things like like it's an insult. You can't insult us when we just accept that's who we are. Yeah, no, totally. Like, Natalie, you're so um inconsistent. You change your mind all the time. Oh, she, she's like this this way, but she might wake up and be like that the next you're day. Like, Thank you. I'm like, I find that so I'm so excited about myself in that. Thank you for saying that. And he's like <sighs> but if I tell you you're a procrast, if, if I tell you you're always late, like we know people are always late, and you go, uh, I'm never late. Right. You, you're know in denial. Know your gray flags. Know your gray flags. And accept gray them flags. As a part of who you are, and you can either choose to work on them or just love them about yeah. yourself. No. But know your ish. Yeah, him and I are exact opposite of <laughs> organization. I, he, I drives mm. him crazy about me and drives, I'm like, there should be a medium. You know what you are? What? No, no. You know what you are. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he yeah. He knows what he is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we together. We used to fight over it all the time. Yeah. And now we're just like, now I'm like, yeah. I try harder and he try, He doesn't, he's not on me about right. it. Doesn't, like, my 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 clothes are on the floor beside the laundry basket. Mm-hmm. He doesn't understand why they don't mm-hmm. go in. I don't know why they don't go in. They just, that's not where they go that's in my brain. That's where they fell off. That's where they fell off. You know, he also hates, which is mm-hmm. such mm-hmm. A, a woman thing, mm-hmm. that I don't take my underwear out of my pants. Uh-huh. <laughs> he Hates that. Does he go separate it? Yeah, oh, he never, th- his underwear would never be in his pants. Yeah. I'm like, what's wrong with you? That's normal it, human behavior. Well, I also think it's harder. Our jeans are way tighter. Uh-huh. And if we take them off, they, our underwear comes down with them. Oh, yeah, no, he cannot handle yeah. that I don't. He's like, it is so, you're, you're telling me that when someone does your laundry, you want them to peel off your dirty underwear and you're okay with that. I go, I've never thought about it. And I'm like, I just do it. Mm-hmm. If I have to do it, I do it. Mm-hmm. All my kids have their underwear peeled to their pants. <laughs> they just, yeah, yeah. Boys track pants inside out with their underwears in them. Of course. Even my socks and my jeans. I yes. Have to go. Yes. Yes. The whole thing is attached. Yes. <laughs> he cannot handle it. You know and there's a lot of people that would be like, I know. I can't believe you do that. I know. Like, how old are you? I know. And then I have to leave them and I leave them on the floor beside the laundry mm-hmm. basket and he's like, <sighs> and, he, and he hates that we use clean towels every time we have a shower. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> You know, your bathroom, though, looks uh, quite neat. I keep a lot of my products on the counter. Oh, he. And I had I, to get a thing for it because I it was work, his biggest pet peeve. I need to work harder at that. I went on Amazon and got an organizer, so all my things are there, mm-hmm. but I was trying to respect what we share a bathroom. He'll literally take my side and just pull it all over. I go like this. He goes, where's the thing? I go, on your on your sink, on your side. He goes, I'm sorry, which one is my sink? Yeah. No, no. Because your shit is we, everywhere. We have sides. And also, last night, I went to pee. 
and there was no toilet paper because mm-hmm. he would never, I don't know what happened, but he didn't refill the toilet paper. Mm-hmm. I don't know why, okay, because we all leave it empty. Mm-hmm. Like we don't put a new one on. So I guess he took it off and didn't put a new one on. Mm-hmm. And I said, I'm going to go, I made him get out of bed even though I hadn't started peeing yet. And I'm like this, I need toilet paper. Mm-hmm. And I hadn't peed yet. I could have got it, mm-hmm. but I wanted to make a point without saying a point. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't know what person doesn't know that a girl needs toilet paper every time they sit down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's your um, job. And and so I wanted you to, if you throw it out, put a new one on. Yeah. I leave it there. That's yeah. my fault. But if you take off the old one, yeah. put a new one on. And you know what that's called? Teaching people how to treat you. He now knows. He knew. He always knew. He always refilled it. But you you, you don't he refill it one time, you're going to get caught. And he, he is beginning to be like, why do I that's have to put the toilet seat down after I pee, but you don't have to put it up when you when you go pee? And I go, because we, so because guess. sometimes you have to sit down. Mm-hmm. And we always have to sit down. Mm-hmm. So the person who has to always sit down, mm-hmm. you put the seat down because mm-hmm. you're 50-50. Mm-hmm. I'm 100. Mm-hmm. So that's 150. Mm-hmm. You only have a 50% stand rate. Mm-hmm. Put the fucking seat down. Oh, yeah. You like it down after? Huh? You like the toilet seat down after? I fall into the toilet if it's not down. Oh, that. He lifts it up, eh? Yeah. To- I'm pretty sure mine just go in the middle. I don't think they lift it up. It's never up. Unless we've had a guest there. They pee just in the hole. Oh, my! all my boys lifted up because yeah. the girls scream if there's pee on the seat. There's always pee on my seat, though, when your kids are here. <laughs> there you go. Because, because they, they dribble. Yeah, I mean, they use my bathroom a lot. And there's no pee. Not Do they my... wipe it after? I don't think so. Or does it dry? I know what it looks like dry. Yeah, there's always Not pee. Not in up. my bathroom. Uh, the base, the, the main floor seems to always smell know. like pee. Yeah. I don't know why that happens. If maybe the toilet is too high or too low, or maybe it's when they're in a big rush because they're let's running in the them, door. Let's ask them. Do but you, I don't have pee. I, I know what pee on toilet seat looks like. Yeah. It's not much. Triple, triple. Yeah, but I don't, I don't have it. And if I, cause if I have it, I'll always wipe it, but I don't see it a lot. And I don't think they left it. Do they sit down when they pee? Uh, I don't see them sit down to pee and I, my, my open door policy. Yeah. Now okay, they're standing, well, and then they're peeing, and then they start talking to me. I go focus, right? Because when you look away, the hose goes away. Focus, yeah. I I also have seen a couple of them wipe the uh, like a drop off the toilet seat. They might wipe it. I think they wipe it, it. off if they see they, it. They wipe their dick. No, they wipe the seat. Yeah, I've seen them wipe they the should seat. just wipe their dick. But but it's my seat. Yeah, but all of them should just wipe their. Well, dick. they should do that too. Men should just wipe their dick because if it dribbles, if it's a pee on your 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 underwear. That's gross. Wipe your dick. There is Just a little dab dab. No. There's toilet paper there. No. You can, why wouldn't, you, you know what? I'm going to start teaching my kid, wipe your dick. My kids also don't think it's weird. None of them think it's odd that boys, I thought that our, the, this generation of boys would think it's weird peeing in a urinal beside another guy. And I'm like, you guys are all. We are getting into that next episode where I am talking about <laughs> locker rooms. Mm-hmm. That is next episode. Mm-hmm. Sorry. And why are women and men so different? And do you look at each other's dick? They said they don't. Yes, they do. My boys were like, it's not like you're looking. Yeah, they do. Okay. A hundred percent. I. They're all lying. They're not looking because they don't want to get caught looking. They're looking. All right. We'll see y'all later. <laughs>